Welcome everyone to You Are the Cosmos global event in which we call forth the deep wisdom of our unique abilities of the sacred self. In this time of great change, there is a strong movement toward reclaiming our power as masters of co-creation with our Mother Earth to transform our world. I am your host for this event, Amanda Kolbaba, and today I'm excited to present Taylor Norris. Taylor Ann Norris, MS, is a Holy Fire Three World Peace Karuna Reiki Master and professional member of the Reiki, Reiki Membership Association. She empowers others with Holy Fire Three World Peace Reiki classes and sessions online. Taylor is also a passionate certified galactic astrology soul reading quantum soul guidance practitioner. She integrates advanced Reiki techniques and intuition into her galactic astrology soul readings for clients healing, guiding, guidance, and empowerment. Taylor teaches classes that combine the infinite healing of Reiki journeys with the divine timing and wisdom of galactic astrology to assist spiritual seekers in their quest for truth, understanding, and embodying more of their multidimensional self. Her dream is to co-create heaven on earth and empower cosmic peace, guiding you home, to heaven on earth within through Reiki and astrology. Her topic for today is discover your soul origin, gifts and talents with galactic astrology and Reiki. Welcome Taylor, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me and inviting me to be a part of this event, Amanda. You are so welcome. Thank you. So I'm very excited about your topic today. It sounds so interesting and definitely within our theme. My first question for you is how do you discover a person's soul origin with Reiki? Yes. So there are so many ways to think about the soul and where we come from and what we're truly all about, what we're here to do in this lifetime. And one of my favorite ways to do this is with Reiki energy. And in my process and training with Reiki, it has just continued to open up doors of awareness and pathways into uncovering more of this truth. So I've been guided really since my first Reiki training to keep studying and keep learning and keep going and really listening to the energy and seeing that there is no limit to what we can uncover and explore and what questions we can ask and what insights we can also receive. So in my training, I learned this Reiki journey technique from my teachers, Colleen and Robin Vanelli. And it is basically a technique where you are doing a shamanic journey that uses Reiki energy as the way to produce that really, really deeply relaxed state, that altered state of consciousness, and then actually travel into enlightened realms of consciousness for healing, for empowerment, for guidance, where we can ask these really big questions and actually receive divine insights from these enlightened sources of information. So that is how I explore soul origin for my clients. That's how I've done it for myself as well as actually a specific Reiki journey channel through called the Galactic Ancestry Reiki Journey that's really intended to uncover more of those soul origins specifically for star seeds and people who really feel that connection of being from the stars. But it, it can work for anybody and any any kind of soul origin. And it's so interesting doing these journeys, the 
the diversity of experiences, the information that comes through that keeps expanding my belief system because I'm just observing Reiki energy doing the work and showing creation and showing the story of human origins and soul origins and what is the soul and what is the spirit and what is humanity and what is what is really all of this about how does it work together through all these different sets of experiences and eyes so you know it's one thing to kind of feel into my own soul origin which continues to evolve <laughs> By the way, it, it wasn't like, oh, I found out what it was and then it stopped. It kind of, it keeps unfolding and revealing to me as I continue to heal and let go of certain limitations and, you know, issues with self-worth. Well, that couldn't possibly be true. You know, I couldn't possibly be from that realm or this realm. And and so it's so powerful to do this work with Reiki because it does heal those blocks to really accepting how beautiful and unique and divine each of us are. So, you know, it really started with this one journey and then it's it's expanded in my client work where, you know, I, I just channel whatever their the journey is for them and like I said, very interesting things come through, things that, you know, maybe I've learned about or heard about and haven't even really taken on as something like I believe in, but then I'll see it for a client in their journey. I'm like, okay, well, there's really something to that, uh, that particular origin or that kind of idea about what a soul can be in some of the different forms a soul can take. So it's very interesting work. It sounds fascinating uh, because I do Reiki myself and I'll have, you know, past lives come up for people or yes, receiving messages. So I wanted to ask you, when you do this work for somebody, you're actually channeling um, their their lives in those other realms or you're seeing their origins from the different stars galaxies can you give us a little bit more understanding of maybe some examples or stories of some of your clients if you'd like to share yeah so i'm channeling reiki energy and reiki is universally guided life force energy it's this enlightened source of information and creation and you know has access to to everything in in my experience so I'm really just channeling Reiki and observing what Reiki shows me because when I have a client or somebody coming to me they're they're often saying well I want to know what my soul origin is so then I have permission to receive that information and Reiki will just show me. So I'm just observing whatever Reiki is showing me about a person. And I say show because one of my clear senses that's dominant is clairvoyance, but it comes in in other ways too. A lot of times I'm doing automatic writing. So that's how the information is coming through. So it can just, it can be a sense of like claircognizance clear intellect, clear knowing, clear thinking, and just come through in the writing that way. And some of the different origins I've seen are, this is an example of something where I've read about it, but I didn't really necessarily believe in it. But then I've had a few clients who this is the case for them in, in channeling different journeys for them where they are asking this question, like, where do I belong? Where do I come from? And I've seen evidence of blue printer souls, what are called these blue printer souls that are really here on earth now observing like how things are going, how people are operating, how systems are working, the health of the earth, the health of humanity, all the species really interested in, you know, observing and kind of evaluating assessing like being an antenna on the ground for how things are on earth because in their soul origin they were part of like those original creational blueprints of 
how the solar system is going to be and how the earth is going to be and in a part of like the divine templates that really started that innate structure so they tend to have a lot of vast information about how things work here and then some may feel very much just in that observer role and then others are are very much in that co-creation process of like bettering systems so that's one example that's yeah really really interesting to me that it's just yeah it's so cool to see that how I'll learn about something not necessarily believe it and then I see evidence that well okay there's something to that <laughs> the blueprinters are really something um I've seen a lot of dragon soul origins as well ancient dragon beings and you know just magnificent beings from from the stars and and very much like carrying that primordial creational energy in this unconditional love frequency with them and I know this year is the year of the dragon in Chinese astrology so it seems like many of our dragons are awakening and and have awoken and and these souls are very committed to the earth committed to humanity and carrying many of these divine creation codes and really wanting to uplift the earth and improve the the health and well-being of the earth and and just holding so much ancient wisdom within their bodies and their their connection to nature and goodness and wholeness and unity consciousness as well very powerful souls <laughs> the dragon souls um, there are so many others. Um, one one that comes to mind, these royal souls I was seeing a lot at the beginning of uh, doing this this work in a very focused way. People who had many different royal star alignments in their charts as well, because I'm an astrologer, so I get to check kind of the the information I receive intuitively with their charts and that's really helped me in my own trust of my intuition. So I've seen these souls that have had these lifetimes of mastery on the earth. They, they're very experienced on the earth and can achieve a lot in this lifetime, really helping others, younger souls, maybe souls who have not had as much experience on the earth and really struggle with like the culture here and how things are and adapting and adjusting. So very often these royal souls with a lot of these royal star alignments in their charts are, are, are growing through very powerful experiences in this lifetime so they can really shine a lot of light for others on the earth and, and guide those who are a bit newer in learning the ropes here are very often connected to the archangels and kind of have that archangelic frequency of an origin. I've seen a lot of angels and archangelic soul origin experiences too within, you know, kind of being used to that that group soul consciousness. Again, with the dragons, like being used to more of a group soul consciousness and then individuating more and and having that be a part of their experience on earth this whole like separation illusion we all experience here the the perception that we are somehow separate from the divine and then separate from each other separate from nature and so on and angelic souls are are definitely carrying that that love and compassion frequency in their lives now and something that recently came in about that because I've really been as I've worked with more of the the galactic and the star seeds and the stars this question of you know what's the difference between like a enlightened extraterrestrial or like an enlightened alien and an angel, because their frequencies actually feel very similar, these enlightened, just loving angel beings. And 
some information that came in recently is that we have the angelic realm like around the earth and within this solar system that angelic realm but every single other planet and other star systems also have their own angelic realm so someone could identify more with this star seed frequency and also identify with the angelic realm as well because they can kind of be both too so that's yeah that's been a really fun awareness to have recently with the angelic souls Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of this. It's such, a, you know, as you're speaking, I'm just, it feels almost like there's so many layers to who we really are. And we are just sort of stuck or have been stuck in this superficial um, part of us, awareness. And it's like this time is really breaking that open and allowing people to, to question like, you know, why am I here? Or what? why do I do the things that I do or feel the way I do? And the meaning is so much deeper and so much more expansive than, you know, we give it credit or even understanding. Like when you speak about, you know, the dragons, uh, beings of dragons, and and even the first one, the was it Blue uh, Blueprint? Blueprinters. Blue printers. And yes, I've heard of, um, you know, the beings who have created, you know, um, our worlds and systems and to think that they're here and checking everything out and you could be one of them and not realizing that's what you're doing. Just fascinating. Um, so one thing that's coming up to, and I know people are thinking this in their minds, maybe, is that, you know, how do you know what you are or how do you have direction for people to be able, like, yes, they can definitely reach out to you and, and ask for, you know, guidance and to do the Reiki or the astrology, but is there ways to, for them to sort of go inwards and, and figure that out or yeah, figure that out for themselves? Yeah, exactly. That's that's it. just it is going within whatever kind of practice they have spiritually. For me, it's Reiki and then astrology as well. But for others, it might be meditation or shamanic journeys. Like I said, the Reiki journeys are very powerful. Meditating with the intention to uncover more about that soul origin, even before sleeping as well, going to sleep with that intention. Okay, show me in my dreams, my past lives, and you know, even deeper than that, like where I came from, you know, what am I? Where do I belong to? These kinds of questions who I am, you know, who I am and all my various experiences. I think just inviting that question into your reality, then you're kind of guided to the different practices, reading sessions, classes, information, rabbit holes to go down to. So yeah, I would say just be really curious and ask the question and be open to receive answers and insights in different ways that come in. And maybe, you know, keep a note somewhere where you can like go back and add to it. I'm thinking like keep a note on your phone, like soul origin. And anytime you have an idea that comes through, you know, just kind of jot it down or a place you can return to when you receive insights and meditations or journeys or in your dreams, recording your dreams, that you have one place where you can go back and write down more of the clues. And as I said, it's an unfoldment process as well. 
because I know at certain times in my journey, I'm like really resonating with dragon soul experiences or really resonating with a specific star system, Andromeda or a crux star, like very specific, or really resonating with the galactic center. The black holes often come up in this work as well. And like, what does that even mean? You know, am I from another galaxy and exploring that? And then recently, I've really been exploring this question of the angelic realms. And then it, you know, not even thinking about it having to be, you know, one soul origin either. It's like opening to that multidimensional self and the variety of experiences we've had. So yeah, if if it changes and involves over time, like allow it, allow it to, because you're just on this journey of remembering more and more of of yourself. And that that gets, like you were saying, very expanded. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, it just as I'm speaking with you, I just feel like, wow, we really have forgotten who we are in such a deep, deep way. We really have. And it's so exciting to um, realize that we come from so many different places and have so many different layers and purpose to this life. And we have, a lot of us don't have a clue for, with that. Um, have you worked with people who have been, their origins have sort of, they've been like, in so many different places like is that a, a usual thing or is it more common to be from one you know place and and their journey has come here can you discuss that a little bit for us yeah, this is where the astrology can be really helpful and how I like to do my work with this question is you know, either doing repeated Reiki journeys for someone, because that information, it's so infinite, you can only bring so much through and integrate so much at one time. And the same with the, the galactic astrology soul readings I do, where I receive the information through the Reiki journey, that gives me some information. And then I can look at somebody's chart and fill in the gaps with that. And so the kind of astrology I practice, galactic astrology, is looking at fixed star alignments to the planets. And with those, we can get clues about a very wide range of lifetimes, not just soul origin, not just one. It's like more information than you can really access and integrate in just one reading typically. Um, it's so infinite. And that's why people are, you know, I encourage people, if you're curious about this, definitely take a course with my teacher, Julia Balaz, and you can, you can learn more about it for yourself as well. So very often, yeah, I tend to see a lot of diversity in souls. Often for a person, maybe they have incarnated a lot on earth, but even with those people, I will see connections to other star systems, you know, that suggest incarnations and soul experiences and other star systems. Some clients blow me away with how many different alignments they have that suggest that they have just been everywhere, pretty much everywhere in the known uh, Milky Way galaxy, and then evidence that they have you know, a diversity and variety of experiences beyond this galaxy as well. That's fairly common, actually, to see people where there's evidence that they've had experience beyond the Milky Way galaxy. And we see that with strong alignments with the black holes, with Andromeda galaxy, and then sometimes other galaxies as well. Or that information will just come through in the journey that they have a lot of experiences beyond this galaxy. And then when I look at the charts, it's like, oh, they have a lot of alignments to the black hole, such as the galactic center at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And then there are, there is actually quite a few other black holes we can look at as well. So yes, 
we are all, you know, this is a melting pot planet Earth. You know, it really, really is. I think that's one of the signatures of this planet is the, the diversity and the variety here and all the different mixtures of genetics coming together and expressing and having it be one place where it's like everything is right here. You know, microcosm, macrocosm, we are the universe and the universe is us. So yeah, people tend to be a good mix of everything, even if they've incarnated on the earth, there's an emphasis on that. Yeah. Is there a reason um, why earth is, you know, everybody seems to want to come here because we can look at it and be like, wow, it's really chaotic here. And a lot of people are quite happy. And at the same time too, is that part of it as well? Like, you know, a little bit of clashing or butting heads is because we all come from places of origins that are so different and you know what could that what is the purpose for all coming here can you talk a little bit about that yeah I think it's just such a a powerful evolutionary time in earth cycle earth's cycle the spirit of the earth cycle you know where we are in space where we are in the processional cycle where we are in these larger cycles of time where there has been so much forgetting, there has been so much kind of like degeneration and loss of knowledge, loss of remembering, and things kind of going underwater beneath the surface and not being accessible to us. And so now I think this, this planet becomes very, very attractive for souls who are wanting to be a part of that awakening and wanting to be a part of the betterment and contributing to the remembering and the wellness of the earth and to celebrate in the, the diversity as well. Because, you know, in these other realms, in the formless realms where things are enlightened and it is all peace, it, it seems you can't imagine from that perspective how difficult things are here on earth too and like how powerful the experience of forgetting and conditioning and programming and so on is. So I think a lot of us have, were just these like very courageous souls. Like, yeah, I'll remember. I can do it. I can handle it. I'll, you know, be on purpose, be on track, come to earth, and then, you know, maybe get lost in things for a while and then find our ways back out. And we're seeing what I've observed is people have been able to kind of remember and awaken younger and younger and younger, and that the souls coming in now hopefully are in containers where they are able and empowered to be in their remembering, to be in their more awakened state and not have to go through the forgetting as much because so many adults and parents and, and people are really committed, families are committed, elders are holding this information and these codes and this wisdom and this awakening and this intention so that younger and younger generations don't have to struggle as much as the ones who have come before. So I, I really do think it's just going to be better and better. I look at some of the charts of souls who've come in, and it's it's just amazing, the energy and the frequency and the light of these these young young humans who are here and have so much in the way of assisting us with the challenges we face. And I know I work with like future selves a lot as well and the descendants quite often and, you know, receiving their guidance in what we can do now so that they have the best reality and kind of like tapping into what they know that we can do now to allow the best and brightest future for the wholeness and the wellness of the earth and humanity and everybody who's here. So yeah, I hope that shed some light on that question. Yes, thank you. That's beautiful. Um, 
I sort of have two questions and it's funny because they're in opposite directions. <laughs> so I'm going to ask this one first and then come back to the what you were talking about for the future. Um, but I wanted to ask you, over the years of working with people with Reiki or looking at their astrology charts, has there been a change in the people or the souls that you've been seeing um, in respect to where they come from and their purpose here? I know we touched on it, I think, a little bit already, but has there been a pattern for you that you've seen sort of shift and change over the years of shifting and changing on the planet? Yes. And I think it also has to do with my own evolution and my own frequency and kind of what I'm healing too, because it's that mirror kind of thing where um, as healers and readers and practitioners, often like we are brought the clients who really mirror us and the students who mirror us powerfully. So I, I've definitely noticed in my own evolution uh, a change with that. At the be you know, earlier in my work, even thinking just to last year, there was a lot of focus on Atlantis, Atlantean memories and Atlantean souls, Atlantean themes coming up. And lately there's been more of an angelic focus. I've noticed there's been the blueprinters. Um, the dragons were very highlighted for a while. It really, you know, I do just see a lot, but I guess my the frequency of the people who come to me raises as I keep raising too. And, and their sincerity and their intention and their, their willingness to engage and unfold more of their soul's mastery. I just, I, I guess I feel so humbled by what I see in people who are so committed to their own healing and that is one one big theme I've seen. They're so committed to their own healing. They're so committed to their own remembering, their expansion, and really committed to unfolding their soul purpose at a higher and higher frequency. You know, wherever they're at in that, whatever they're doing for a living, whatever their relationships are, you know, there's this real sincere desire to be of service and to have more clarity and have more validation of whatever it is they're doing. And usually I'm in this role of just reflecting the people like how awesome they are and how they're already on track with their sole purpose and giving them ideas and suggestions and guidance for how to like keep spiraling that up. So I, I feel like I've been really blessed from the beginning, but again, it's like, as I evolve, the people who I get to interact with are, are also different. And for me, it always just feels like soul family. There is one time as well where the Atlantis seemed to be a big theme that was coming up and Orion seemed to be a big theme. Orion star system was a big um, theme because they they dealt with such exaggerated polarity far beyond what we've experienced on the earth within Orion system and many of us are here healing traumas from other places that we we've carried within our souls that you know our soul is that part of us that's eternal and can sustain different injuries and wounds and kind of feel more fragmented. Whereas I see the spirit as being more of that wholeness that's also eternal, completely connected to the divine and can never be wounded. So many of these injuries, wounds, and patterns from actually other star systems will just highlight at certain times of the year, I notice, because I'm tracking the astrology and it seems to match whatever the star alignments are. 
So earlier this year, too, we had a lot of Achernar star activation within Eridanus constellation. And so I was seeing kind of a lot of Achernar stars, for example, star seeds or, or souls with many Achernar experiences, who then also had many experiences of cataclysm often on the earth and in other star systems, what that experience of of being around for earth changes and major planetary changes and ecosystems and pole shifts and flooding and all these kinds of things. So, yeah. Wow, thank you. It brings to mind too that part of our healing, um, healing our traumas and wounds is really about remembering. It's, it's not always so focused on what happened to us in childhood, um, in our present day life, and um, reworking and understanding relationships and boundaries, it actually goes far deeper and more intense than we realize at all. So sometimes the remembrance is really key to a lot of our deeper healing with our wounds and traumas. Would you say that that's correct? Yeah, it's going into the root cause. And that's what Reiki is so great for, is that it will go to the root cause of any issue. And that's why, you know, I get to observe often what that root cause is. And it it very often takes us across space time, <laughs> you know, to get to that that root cause. Yeah, I think that's that's a big piece of the difference I've noticed in people is that willingness to really explore the soul, really explore what is unconscious. And in in doing so, that is the the remembering and the integration of whatever has been unconscious or laying dormant and can really be of benefit and and healing and empowering and bringing a lot of insights into this lifetime. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask too, because this is actually in um, part of uh, You Are the Cosmos, uh, a Remembrance into the Mastery. Um, I wanted to, you bring that up, and I have seen that on some of your newsletters, too, in your courses. But can you let everybody know what you mean by soul's mastery? Like, like lifetimes of mastery? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Soul mastery, lifetimes of mastery. We all have mastery, and it's it's present within our soul and often we just need reminding that that is there and often people are expressing it and they're not even aware of it <laughs> so becoming aware of it and often this is where the astrology chart can help so much is there are actually ways of looking at the chart different shapes in the chart trines and sextiles certain aspects between the planets there can be an elemental emphasis that really suggests that somebody, for example, is here and has this opportunity in this lifetime to develop mastery within the emotional sphere or within the spiritual sphere or within the mental and communication sphere. And it's really just about knowing that so that you can work with that that there is that promise and that potential of achieving a certain degree of mastery in this lifetime in those in those life areas because there's usually additional information about we can see well which life areas are you achieving emotional mastery and maybe it's you know your relationship with yourself your relationship with others and then your your creative expression for example or maybe your home and your roots in your family for example that's one way I look at mastery. And it's also just inviting Reiki in the journeys and in the readings and sessions I do to reveal those lifetimes of mastery so people can be aware of them. And, 
And then there can be that process of, oh, really? Like I did that? Like, you know, this feeling of like not being worthy or not wanting to claim it. And so there's a whole healing process that occurs in, in that as well. In the chart, I'm trying to think there's another, another indication of mastery, but it is slipping my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know what it is. Um, the placement of Pluto with the nodes of the moon. Often people in, you can look in the astrology chart and see that they have had recent lifetimes on earth, potentially also in other star systems where they were really working with a certain theme. So maybe they were working with the theme of Sagittarius and they were really focused on higher mind learning and expansion, being wild and free and adventurous out in nature and, you know, really having this this commitment to philosophy and deeper understanding. So there can be an indication that they've really been working with that theme. And in this lifetime, they are back and they want to make sure like they already have a master's degree level experience with that archetypal theme. And in that area of life, for example, you know, maybe it's in their 12th house of journeying and withdrawal and going within and understanding like the mysteries of life and the depths of their unconscious. So there can be an indication that in this lifetime, they are back for their PhD level in all things Sagittarius zodiac sign archetype. So they're here to learn, they're here to teach, they're here to share, they're here to ask the big questions and be open to receive answers. And also they're here to release judgments and release, you know, limiting belief systems and release any kind of attachment to, I need to be a certain way or reality needs to be a certain way or others need to be a certain way and I'm right and they're wrong, letting go a lot of those more rigid dogmatic belief systems. So that's another indication I often see with clients and it can be helpful for them to know that because they'll already have a sense of, well, that has been a major theme <laughs> in my life that just keeps coming up and up again. I often see that actually with relationships too. A lot of people have North Node and Pluto and in, in Libra that indicates they're really learning balance in this lifetime, really focused on relationships, really focused on peace and harmony and beauty and and not expressing some of the the shadow aspects of Libra, which can be more of that kind of people pleasing or being a doormat or something like that, being so other focused that you don't know who you are. So there's that that balance there. So I love that's why I love the astrology chart because it can really like clearly make these things objective, what you already are experiencing in your life and already have like a, a hint of, but you just need maybe a little bit of extra information to be able to claim it as your, your truth validation. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you for that. I really felt what you brought up there is that we, a lot of us are already masters. Um, we've done this before. We've been other places. And part of us remembering and taking our power back is to, you know, reclaim it, not be afraid, you know, the deserving. A lot of us struggle with low self-worth or not feeling like we deserve. And this is part of our healing too and what we bring to humanity and this planet. And some of us, yes, we're here doing our PhD from our masters. So why not be like, yes, we're good with this. It's good. And I wanted to ask too, if somebody were to come to you to do this type of work, would it be best to begin with you with the astrology and then take it into the Reiki practice? How would you say 
you know, somebody who wanted to work with you and to go deeply into these layers, how they should begin the process? Yeah, I think it's different for everybody. And it's like, follow your curiosity, follow your joy with that. I have been guided to start a series of classes where I'm teaching more of the astrology basics alongside Reiki. And this is very much in the idea stage at this point. I haven't launched it yet, but I have been teaching classes that combine astrology teaching with a Reiki healing journey. And those have been very transformational and helpful for people. So if you love to learn in a group environment, I would suggest the the classes and especially if you're wanting to learn some astrology basics and and heal and reveal your chart within a supportive group environment the classes are wonderful I teach reiki classes as well so it's so empowering to learn and connect with your own potential to heal yourself especially if you know you're somebody who benefits a lot from Reiki, or maybe you need a practice so that you can access more of this information from inside you. Uh, Taking a Reiki class is really beneficial. And then I have different readings that I give and then the sessions and it really, you know, if, if you are having a question about that, you can email me and we can figure it out because it really depends on your intention, where you're at and where you're drawn to and what you're most curious about, whether we start with just astrology or Reiki and astrology, like in my galactic astrology soul readings, or or maybe we just go with a, a Reiki session too. So, uh. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. And I just wanted to point out too, because people might be wondering about this, your galactic astrology, that's different from the Western, because I've had my astrology chart done. And this is, you know, about my origins and that have not come up. And it's mostly been, yeah, I think it's all been Western astrology. So that is different from what you are doing. Yeah, so I have, I do work with Western tropical astrology what galactic astrology does is it adds in the fixed stars to that information so that's where we can see more of the soul experiences off of planet earth and also understand what are the star archetypes that are working with us and are very important in this lifetime so it's still i still work within the western tropical astrology and I do do readings that are just the the western astrology it's called astrological consultation and then I have two other kinds of readings that focus on the fixed stars one of those is galactic astrology and I also do another kind of reading that looks at stars in ancient Egyptian way which is also very interesting as well that's the ancient starlight readings yeah Oh, that sounds very cool. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? (laughs) Oh, yes. Yes. This is very interesting because it it works with the stars in a different way. The alignments are calculated in a different way, essentially, that uses the whole sky versus just the ecliptic, like where the sun and moon and the planets, like that path is where Western astrology is making those fixed star alignments with. In the Egyptian astrology, it's it's a method that comes at least as early as ancient Egypt. And you can even see it depicted on the ceiling of different tombs. The Egyptians had these star calendars where each 10-day period of the year was governed by a certain set of stars, the heliacal rising star like ruled that period of 10 days. And so for each of us at the day we were born in our location, we have a heliacal rising star. This was a star that had been in the underworld, had not been visible at night, and then would rise with the sun. And this is a very sacred star. This you can think about as your star sign. So more than just thinking about, oh, I have a sun in Taurus or I have a sun in Leo, 
you have a heliacal rising star that really is your star sign. So that that's some of the information that can come through the heliacal rising star. It speaks more about your, your purpose, your mission, some of your gifts and talents, some of the archetypal mastery you bring into this lifetime. There's the heliacal setting star, which is more of a gift, a blessing that comes from your ancestry, whether that's on the earth and also from the stars. And this is something that ripens over the course of your lifetime and helps you accomplish whatever your mission is, your soul intentions for this lifetime. And then there's a bunch of other alignments that come through in what's called parans, which is the relationship between when certain planets were rising, setting, or culminating, and when certain stars were rising, setting, or culminating. And when they were doing that at the same time, they're in relationship. And that can tell you more about your gifts and talents and focuses and abilities and you know what you're setting out to accomplish in this lifetime and experience in this lifetime. Uh, Great, thank you for that. And I do want to go back to the Reiki for a moment um, because I notice we've talked a lot about Reiki, but you do specifically, I think it's the fire. Sorry, I forgot the term now. Let me just look at my notes or you can let me know. It's a different type. It's not because I do the Usi Reiki and you do. It's Usui Holy Fire 3. Thank you. World yes. Peace Reiki. Yeah. Right. Sorry. That's why I was trying to get that whole term in there. And I couldn't I find know. it. <laughs> yes. Can you explain to people what that is, like the differences are? Yeah. So this lineage of Reiki builds upon Yusui Reiki. So it, it, it teaches the same basic symbols and techniques of Yusui Reiki, but it also introduces a specific frequency of reiki this energy that is the holy fire energy that has evolved into from holy fire to holy fire two it upgraded the energy then upgraded to holy fire three it upgraded in 2020 to where we were able to teach and share reiki online with this new frequency it upgraded again in 2022 with the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces, it upgraded to world peace Reiki, which is really an empowering energy of, of inner peace, no matter what's going on in the outside world, and then empowering that within the external reality as well. Holy fire is very helpful for all of this remembering <laughs> we are talking about here because it it provides a gentle purification, but it also will release any of the, the layers of the conditioning, the programming, the culturally created self, that self that kind of pushes us in a box and says you need to be a certain way and like hide your light and blend in and fit in and you know, this is what's expected of you. Holy fire will heal that. And it will also reveal your gifts, your talents, the mastery, the memories, the remembering, all of this. And really, for me, it, it's empowered me to be curious and like follow the path of my curiosity and interests and and develop myself in ways that my culturally created self never would have allowed me to. But now with, without these layers blocking me from that, from my light and from my joy, I've been able to move beyond that. And that's what happens across the board with the, the holy fire energy. And it's, it's such a, it also brings in this feeling of safety, of trust, of guidance, naturally kindling your intuition and opening your intuition and then leading you down the avenues you need to develop your intuition if you are wanting to do that. Not everybody wants to do that, but it can provide enough safety so that your intuition 
opens and you can decide what you want to do moving forward. And for people who are very, very sensitive, which I would say that's been me, it's helped me understand my sensitivity and my openness so that I'm not just absorbing other people's stuff all the time. And that when I am trying to be of service and, and, and facilitate healing, that it's not draining to me and that I can turn my sensitivity kind of on and off and be aware of more of those gifts and talents and, and how I can best use them so that I'm not being used by them, but I can skillfully, you know, choose to use them how and in what context and with whom. And yeah, it's just, it's a tremendously empowering energy. Holy fire really awakens one's inner truth, inner authority, and sense of purpose in this life. Yeah. Yeah, I know that sounds amazing. Thank you that um, we all need that beautiful energy of the fire, <laughs> especially right now. So thank mm -hmm. you. And just before we finish, I want to go back to a question I was thinking of um, to do with what you were talking about in the future that you are connecting with our future selves. Can you, yes, you know where this is leaving. <laughs> Can you tell us what you see for our future? Um, what messages you may have received in regards to that? Yeah, that is, that is interesting. I see, I see a beautiful future for us, for those of us who are who are wanting that, who are empowering that, you know, I see increasing interest in that and willingness to be a part of that and be active co-creative agents. And that's really, you know, the holy fire empowering each of us to be our authentic self so we can contribute to that future that we want and, and be empowered to share ourselves in our authentic ways that bring about that which we desire. I mean, looking ahead at the astrology, there's so much of a spiritual leadership that's on the horizon for us in these next years. There is more information than ever before available. I think there's a chance for us to develop intuitively and with our clear senses more than ever. There's a opportunity to communicate in ways that we have not yet experienced and to be more and more embodying our multidimensional self, our interconnectivity with ourselves, within humanity, with the earth, with all the animals and the plants, and then also going beyond the earth as well, really understanding our place in the solar system, our place in the galaxy, our place beyond that, and cultivating right relationship with that and coming together in our families of frequency, in our soul tribe, in our soul family to empower the reality that we wish coming forward. And I think just having that willingness to be listening to your future self and allowing, like I invite my future self in all the time. I'm like, you can just come be in my body <laughs> right now. Like that would be great. You know, tell me what to do. Give me your advice all the time. I will, I will ask for this and, and they're so supportive. So I would invite people to really have a relationship with that, that future self and ask for guidance. You know, what should you be doing? What is your next step on your life path? How can you contribute to this reality that you want moving forward? But I'm really optimistic. There's just so much support in the invisible realms or what has been previously invisible that I think we will increasingly become aware of and be in communication with. And it will also be repeatedly important for us to slow down and ground <laughs> and, 
you know, take take some deep breaths because it it does seem like in the years to come, the pace will just continue to pick up. And I know I experienced this myself and others, the the changes in the perception of time, it's it's like really, really something I think will will continue to be increasing opportunities to be in these flow states of like timelessness and and being in kind of a, a quantum space that feels so deeply healing and it's almost like jumping out of the gravitational field of earth and and aging and and all of these different limitations we place on our human experience i think we will have more and more of that and we can we have that coming from within us from our own inner technology it's not necessarily in like some kind of external like physical technology this is like an awakening of our own inner design being activated for those of us who who wish to welcome that in and it seems like more and more people are interested in in finding their authentic way to that Yes, definitely. Thank you for that. That it's been so it's been so much fun speaking with you today. And um you're just so fascinating with all this great wisdom and knowledge. So thank you so so much for being a part of this. Um, but we do have to start to wrap up because we're running out of time. <laughs> So I'm going to give you a little bit of a break and I'm going to speak for a little bit. I want to let everybody know about Taylor's free gift. She has a guided Reiki meditation and journey to Tau Seti star in the Cetus constellation. The star has been particularly important in 2024 as the total solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th, 2024, was in alignment with this star. Collectively, we have been invited to heal the wounding of the I am presence, which is different for each of us. This meditation supports the healing and revealing of your authentic self, there is also a very deep healing of the unconsciousness, both individual and collective. You may connect with your spirit guides and the enlightened star beings of Tau Seti. The meditation also brings forth your inner guidance and greater levels of your soul's mastery. There are opportunities for guided journaling and automatic writing during the journey. These are optional. Lay down. Be comfortable, play your own music, relax, and receive. Be open to positive results and enjoy the journey. So once more, um, thank you so much, Taylor, for this beautiful free meditation, this free offering. Everybody can find her link to this free gift um, in... Uh, just can't get it out now underneath her link of her interview you will find this meditation so please check it out and just before we go um taylor if you can let us all know where we can find you online and if there's anything else you'd like us to know oh you're on mute <laughs> good call <laughs> yes, so people can find me and connect at taylornorrisreiki.com. I also have a YouTube channel where I post regularly about astrology updates, a Reiki journey every month, and that's Taylor Norris Reiki on YouTube as well as Instagram, Taylor Norris Reiki. And every new moon I offer a free distant Reiki share. And you can find out more about that on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. It's a free event. You can come learn more about the astrology, what's coming up energetically, and then also receive a guided Reiki journey that is specifically for whatever those cosmic energies are and be in a supportive, sacred, safe space of just the kindest, most loving, amazing people who get together every new moon for this event. 
at the end, we also share Reiki together as a group. And it's open whether or not you have Reiki training or astrology knowledge. Everybody's welcome to join. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Yes, check it out if you're interested. And her website and her email um, as well is on the speaker page. So people, you can, can all find it there. So once more, I want to thank Taylor for being with us today and sharing her insights, wisdom, and knowledge. Thank you so much, Taylor. Thank you for inviting me. It has been such a pleasure and joy to be together with you and to all our listeners. So much love and so many blessings on your journey of remembering and reawakening the mastery, the gifts and talents of your soul and spirit. Beautifully said. I can't add anything else to that. That was perfect. <laughs> and I will also say thank you to our audience and viewers. Thank you for being with us today. I will see you all soon. Much love.